Hi guys and welcome to another Wargame Red Dragon video with me Bubble Box for the second tutorial and today we're going to be looking at the games interface. This is a tutorial for pretty much complete beginners and people that have pretty much just started in the game. So during a battle you can use this satellite view if you zoom right out using the mini map to have a better view of the whole of the battlefield. And you can see it's made up of lots of different areas but in these areas these zones you can see golf charlie and they're called different code words bravo and delta and it's important during the game that you get control of as many of these zones as you can and that you deny control of as many of these zones from the enemy as you can as well now on the top left hand corner of the of this um, screen if we start there you can see that this contains your remaining deployment points and these points can be used to call in for reinforcements and you receive additional points for every command zone controlled by you and your team in 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 uh, destruction mode and in conquest mode you get a steady trickle of these reinforcement points and that is really the uh, currency of the game all the points are shared between the number of people in your team so if you hold just one and the rest of your team hold four you will get your share of the uh, points as will they if you hold more zones than they do now the mini map on the top right hand part of the screen uh, allows you to keep an eye on the whole of the battlefield you can see that in this case the red units are the enemy, the blue units are mine enemy and the red blue dots are my CVs that are dotted around. CVs are very very important in this game and you have to have a CV on a zone in order to control that zone. A CV being the control vehicle or the control uh, command vehicle or the command unit can be uh, a ship or an infantry unit or an armored car or sometimes even a tank. Now beneath the minimap is the team and uh, time score. This displays the score for each team and each player and shows how long the battle has been raging. In solo mode, this is when you can also change the pace of the game um, in skirmish and campaign modes just by clicking the down arrow and changing the speed of the game there. Now each zone that you have under your control will be your colour. So all the zones controlled by me are in blue and all the zones controlled by red 4 are in red. Now if we both had a CV on a zone, for example if they had one in the north of Foxtrot and I had one in the south of Foxtrot, then it would remain neutral and white until one of those CVs were either destroyed or one of us moved the CV. Now another important aspect of the map to understand is these reinforcement points scattered around the map. The white arrows here and here indicate the entry points for reinforcements and in order to call in for reinforcements your team needs to have control of a zone with an entry point and if multiple entry points are under your control reinforcements will take the shortest path to reach the battlefield. The long thin arrows here, these blue ones that say that says air, are the entry points for planes and the long hashed one which says C is the entry point for your ships and the white ones of course for your land units. So let's just put that into practice for you so you can see it at work. So if I just speed the game up, if I bring in a couple of challenges, they should come out on that point. And if I move them around, you'll see they'll come in to the shortest entry point under our control. To deselect any unit, you press zero. He says, press zero. Okay. Aircraft, if I get my uh, Eurofighter out, you can see it shows you whereabouts you're going to place it. And just right click and out comes the Eurofighter. Similarly in the sea, if we get out a ship, let's get out a big Congo. Right click and out comes the Congo into the battlefield from the C reinforcement zone. Did I click it? 
sorry, left click, not right click. My apologies. There she is. Now be careful because if you don't control at least one entry point for planes, you don't have access to the airport panel. And similarly, if you have no entry point to the sea, you cannot access the naval reinforcements either. And also, if you don't control at least one entry point for ground units, then you don't have access to the deployment menu. So back to the interface, and I did talk about the airport menu. So this is the airport, really. This is your airport. This is where you have access to all your aeroplanes. And you can open or close it using the aircom command. There is another button here, this plus. If you select a unit and press this plus, it will actually give you a visual of that particular unit. And you can go through the units. It's good for beginners, I suppose, to see which type of unit you have selected. You can do it with the enemy's units as well. I tend to have that off, though, because I know which order all my units are doing. You can also click the HQ button, which will take you briefly away from the game, although the game will continue to run. And you can either surrender, continue the game, or go to the options if you want to, to change some of the options in the game. So let's continue. You can also bring up the chat window by pressing chat. This will allow you to talk to people in the game. You can either talk to everyone in the game. You can talk to just your allies in multiplayer. We're in a skirmish at the moment, so it's not showing up. And you can also chat to any contacts you have that are online at the time. So I could click on any of these people and just write a message whether they're in this particular game or not. And you can clear the screen and you can increase the font size and decrease the font size using these plus and minus buttons as well. So let's get rid of the chat screen. Now over on the right hand side, Oh, sorry, let's have a look at this in the middle here first. So if it's select a unit, we'll select our challengers, it gives some a little bit of information on your unit. You can see it gives the primary and secondary weapon and it gives its health there as well for one and health for the other one. These are in a group of two currently. Now if you want extra information on the unit you have selected, you can either click on the bottom bar here and it will bring up all its statistics, everything you need to know. Click on it again to get rid of that. Or you can simply press the I button on the keypad to get out the information or click on it again to get rid of that. I'll do doing a tutorial on statistics at a later date. So the last thing I want to have a look at is this bit on the bottom right hand of the screen, the company orders. I'm just going to uh, speed the game up a little bit for this so we can get this to work. And we'll have a look at these two challengers which are moving across here. And if we press the split command and just drag a box around them, they will split into two so you can micro them individually and if you want to regroup them you simply press the regroup button and they will regroup so you can split them and highlight them regroup them and split them you can also spread them so if you see an artillery barrage coming in or an airplane attacking them you can quickly spread the units and they'll just they should start to spread out away from each other, away from each other guys, they actually clump together. How bizarre is that? That didn't quite work, but they should, they should spread away from each other. That was quite amusing. Now also on here, we've got an attack command, stop and fire. So if you move them, stop one is pretty uh, self-explanatory. It stops the vehicles. Um, if you press the attack command, you click to the point where you want the unit to attack and it will move towards that position but it will stop and engage any enemy that it comes across. If you want your unit to fire on a position where you can't see any enemy, you just press the fire position and it must have a line of sight. So you just click on there and it will start to shoot at that position where you click on. If you want the units to move by road, you click move fast and click on an area you want them to move to and they will take the shortest route there normally via roads but across fields as well if they deem that to be the shortest or, and quickest distance. One other thing very important especially for vehicles and uh, armoured trucks and anti and things like that is the reverse command. So if you click on the reverse click to where you want your units to reverse and they should start to reverse. And the importance of this is that they keep their front armour facing towards the enemy while they're reversing. 
really, really important. So I think that's about it for this video, guys. I hope you got some useful information out of it. Please do comment, like and subscribe for future tutorials. I've got a whole bunch lined up for you and uh, I'll see you in the next video.